Neverending Audio presents Otherlands. Welcome back to Otherland, science fiction and fantasy, the podcast that brings you fresh writing from authors you may have never heard of every week. This week we read 80s by John F. Keane, a story that gives a glimpse into what a future might look like if we are given the chance to avoid all consequences, a future that offers the ultimate in escapism. This story comes from his sci-fi short story collection, Lonely Ways. 80s by John F. Keane. On the edge of the 80s stands a bar called Miami. Tyler parked his bodacious Ferrari Testarossa there and sauntered through the swinging glass doors. Girls with big hair and even bigger racks danced on the stage to a medley of synthesizer instrumentals. Pretty men with slicked quaffs, designer suits and white-decked shoes posed around the bar. Computer Blue by Prince started playing, and many an elegant foot tapped out the chorus line. He picked up a girl. The cool evening wind whipped through his hair as he drove her home. Africa by Toto with its torturous lyrics, poured smooth as silk from the radio. The mid-eighties burned across Swayze Bridge, its myriad lights brilliant as desert stars. The girl laid her head on his shoulder. Her hair had just the right scent, an apple-fresh aroma. His right arm snaked around her supple waist. Obscurely, the eighties were never more alive than at night. Everyone partied into the small hours and beyond. Jouissance was their only goal, the blinding self-surf of irresponsible ecstasy. There was no old people or children. Everyone existed in their blazing prime, between eighteen and thirty-five. When he considered it, Tyler thought this strange. He himself had been thirty-five for some eight years now. His abode was a monument to superficial consumption, a custom-built mansion with pebble-dash facades and black marble pillars. He braked his car sharply on the gravel drive in true Don Johnson style. Then she was in his arms, fragrant as an April breeze. Tyler carried her inside and laid her on the sofa. There was only one TV channel, a 24-hour cable job called 80s Access. There were lots of films, Die Hard, Back to the Future, Ghost, E.T., punctuated by reruns of Miami Vice, Magnum, Falcon Crest and Dukes of Hazzard. President Reagan appeared on a sudden newsflash, interrupting Marty McFly's trip to the Wild West. Folks, I've found the solution to communism. I'm going to nuke Russia. God bless America! The President briskly summarised his government's achievements. That was enough TV. The master bedroom gleamed in white and gold. A vast purple rain print hung above Tyler's luxurious bed. The girl's superb figure embodied the long-legged bosomy 80s ideal. Brigitte Nielsen, Vanity or Kelly LeBrook. Afterwards, they shared a Marlborough light. What else? Before she dressed deftly kissing him goodbye, and departed. Departed how, and to where? This set Tyler thinking. The life he had lived for the past eight years made no sense. He had no job, so how could he afford this house, a gas-guzzling Ferrari, and an endless round of late-night parties? Then the call came. It was Morven, his boss in undercover narcotics. Tyler, Ferris Kamir is dropping a big cocaine consignment off at the docks tonight. Get down there and apprehend him. Everything fell into place. Tyler kicked off his luxury duvet, yanked on his beach shorts and dashed outside to the car. His best route to the mid-80s lay down Lebrock Avenue and over Swayze Bridge, cutting north to Lake Gecko up Buller Lane. He pulled up before a vast warehouse, a kind of tech-noir hybrid 
full of hooks, chains and derricks. When Tyler heard shots echoing within, he unholstered his automatic and crept stealthily towards the action. Two bodies lay hunched in gory puddles. Oozy bullets riddled the DeLorean DMC-12. A hulking figure, obviously Chimera, stooped to divest a huddled corpse of its briefcase. Police! Hold it right there! Tyler managed to squeeze off four rounds before the Columbian dived back into his Mustang convertible, found the ignition and roared away. Tyler holstered his Glock and sprinted outside to his car, searching his pockets with frantic fingers. Damn, he must have dropped his keys in the shootout. Just then, a white lotus espirit screeched to a halt nearby. The driver smiled, an avatar of 80s loveliness. Her wet-permed raven mane framed a tanned, achingly pretty face with sea-grey eyes and bee-stung glossy lips. Excuse me, officer, would you like some assistance? I need to follow that car, he panted. It's urgent police business. In moments, Tyler was at the wheel. The car handled splendidly, its twin engines thrusting them through the tropical night. Before long, he could see the fugitive's taillights ahead. Tyler floored the accelerator. The lady began stroking his forearm with electric fingers. The stars burned like bonfires. The breeze smelt of violets and tender was the night. He yearned to be with her. If Chimera escaped, though, it meant tons of badly cut cocaine flooding the new, proud America. Although Tyler used the stuff himself, he hated the pushers and their tainted product. With a prayer to President Reagan, he took a hairpin bend at breakneck pace. By now, they were out in the late eighties. Country clubs flashed by, aglow with brilliant levels. They all seemed to be playing raucous glam rock tracks by the likes of Bon Jovi, Def Leppard and Guns N' Roses. Tyler felt uneasy in this district, for reasons too numerous to list. He passed a well-lit road sign. Warning! You are now leaving the eighties! Tyler floored the accelerator. Strange. The further he got from the eighties, the more alien and rugged the landscape became. Gigantic red cacti dotted the roadside, their weird white flowers glowing in the gloom. He glanced to his right. To his astonishment, Bethany had vanished. Something strange and horrible was happening. A little further on, he saw an even more ominous declaration. It read, Warning! The 80s terminate here. Beyond this point, all services listed in your contract, including temporal stasis, cease to apply. Contract? What the hell was going on? Suddenly, his twin engines coughed and spluttered. The fuel gauge showed zero. With infinite grace, the Lotus glided to a halt. Tyler leapt out, his pistol primed for action. He noticed two figures in the distance, standing beside a checkpoint. Tyler jogged up and stopped a few metres from them. One was very short, the other very tall. They bore an uncanny resemblance to Herve Vilches and Ricardo Monteblan from that ancient TV show, the one called Dream Island or something. We got a wild one here, Both, declared the dwarf with an outrageous lisp. Mr Tyler, what are you playing at? asked Ricardo Montalban kindly. Playing at? I'm pursuing a fugitive, Ferris Chimera. Are you sure, Mr Tyler? Irv and I saw no one, and we've been waiting here for all eternity. All eternity? Ricardo smiled warmly, looking like Michelangelo's description of God. Come walk with us a while, Mr Tyler. We have much to discuss. They left the highway, following a dirt track. Both men glowed in the deepening gloom, like living ghosts. The hair on Tyler's neck prickled. A troubling ambience hung over this desolate place. Then Ricardo began to talk in measured tones, shredding Tyler's mental map. As you may know, he began, 
opening parallel worlds was the 21st century's greatest achievement. After all, we walk in one now. OK, this place is somewhat unnatural, Tyler conceded. No one ages. Where are all the old people? Where are all the kids? I've always wondered about that. Ricardo Montalban threw back his elegant head and laughed without malice. Where are all the kids, he asks. Very well, I'll tell you. Some realities are more conducive to psychic manipulation. On Earth, the mind exerts no influence on reality. Here, because of some quantum kink at the Big Bang, we don't know what. Psionic powers are enormously enhanced. Potent, trained minds can raise cities, regulate time, mould the landscape, and much else besides. And so we recreated the 80s here, as a vast theme world. Jog any memories, Mr Tyler? Tyler nodded dumbly. It was all coming back to him. Back on Earth, he was a successful banker, but utterly sick of the 21st century. As a boy, his grandfather had regaled him with tales of the 80s, the last strong, resolute president, the fool of Soviet communism, the matchless flair and decadence. The 80s became his obsession. Tyler dreamed ceaselessly of new wave bands, polo shirts, 501s, awesome chicks, auto-reverse cassette players and Marlboro lights. When Dimension VPL 93214546 became available for 80s aficionados, he jumped at the chance. I can still visit Earth, right? Mr Tyler, it's not that simple. You're saying I can't leave? The dwarf eyed Tyler oddly. Ricardo smiled thinly before replying, Oh no, you can leave, all right. It's coming back that's the problem. If you go now, you can never return, for this place is closed to the outsiders. Like Brigadoon, it dwells in the realm of hidden things. And why's that? We've heard rumours Earth is no longer safe or tolerant. We can't risk any incursions. They might prove unseemly. No longer safe? No longer tolerant? What do you mean? It's still the good old US of A, right? The Constitution? Cheeseburgers? Medicare? Mr Tyler, all you have to do is turn your car around. The tank's quite full, you'll find. Just drive back. Your 80s await you. Homesickness suddenly overcame Tyler, a longing for friends and family. After eight years of perfection, pals, after eight years of sparkling decadence, he yearned for simple pleasures. Yes, it had been wonderful, but even perfection palls. By now, they had reached a large featureless building, built like an aerodrome. The dwarf punched a sequence of buttons on an illuminated console, and a vast door slid open. Within, equipment of paraphysical complexity droned and flashed. So, quavered Tyler, his breath heavy, you can use this to send me home? Of course, Ricardo murmured, but why do you want to? I have to know what's happened to my family, my friends, to America. Are you serious? asked Ricardo, genuine concern on his godlike features. There's no coming back, I tell you. Tyler flushed, his mind made up. Gentlemen, I know you mean well, but I have to return. I don't know why, I just have to. The dwarf gaped. Even his boss blanched a little, his fine eyes wide with disbelief. As you wish, Mr Tyler, sighed Ricardo, resigned. On to the dissembler, please, and please don't struggle unless you want to get scrambled. Scrambled? Across space-time. Goodbye, Mr. Tyler. Can I have the button, boff? Certainly, Herve. Tyler assumed his appointed place on a round zinc platform. Somewhere, a switch clicked. Bile filled his mouth, vile and sour. 
he shut his eyes tight and opened them again to find himself in a room much like the one he had just left. Welcome home, buddy. You're the last. They're smashing this place down tomorrow. They don't like these facilities, see? Tyler said nothing. He sucked in deep breaths and clenched his shaking hands, trying to master himself. Hey, I've got rights, panted Tyler, not liking the fellow's tone. This is America, mister! His new companion, a short jocular fellow in a red technician's overall, guffawed. Friendly sarcasm edged his reply. America! This is Atzlan now, buddy! Atzlan! Atzlan the strong! Atzlan the holy! Atzlan? When did you leave? Uh, 2071, I think. Old timer, huh? You've been away 18 years. Time runs slow over there, I hear. I'll tell you what happened, though. Them Hispanics took over in 2092. Most Anglos have been going the other way, getting out before the decades bar real ciders. The 50s, 70s and 80s are all closed. No one gets in. No one wants to get out. Even the 60s shut off today. That's where I'm off to. Do you mind pressing the button? The control is all set. Wearily, Tyler limped across to the console. The technician took his position on the dissembler and gave a toothy leer, his thumb held triumphantly aloft. Tyler's finger hit the button and the man slowly faded from view, leaving him utterly alone. He ambled to the door. A cool wind stirred the desert night. The constellations were familiar. Everything else was strange. He cursed himself. The eighties were lost forever, and he, Tyler, had thrown them away. The magnitude of his own folly scourged him. Well, there was nothing for it. He would just have to face up to this nightmare reality. His eyes scoured the darkness, saw nothing but darkness. He turned away, yearning for fast cars, speedboats, designer stubble, the Miami bar and chicks with big hair. Longing for tireless novelty, grieving for the past. That was 80s by John F. Keane, read by Jasper Brownrigg. For more writings by John, to support the podcast, or to submit your own writing, check out the description. Thank you for listening to Otherlands. Otherlands.